Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of different things at the same time. Uh, we recently got a build uh, 1268.1, which hopefully by the time you watch the video it's somewhat still relevant, but I'm sure there's going to be some things that are in it. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be uh, creating a complex airstrike up north here. And in doing so, we're going to be implementing the new flight plan features as well as kind of this neat little tip that uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with, but it's worth reviewing. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of reconnaissance and kind of work backwards. So first things first, uh, we're looking up here at uh, Barnes Air Force Base. Uh, it's got a great uh, Japanese restaurant, by the way, if you're into flying to FBO kind of things. And we've got ourselves a little Reaper up here. Actually, it's a Predator, not a Reaper. And uh, so what I'm going to ask this uh, nice little Reaper to do is to do just a little bit of recce up here so that we can identify if there are any interesting targets while we're taking a pot shot out here. Oh, 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 oh that's not good. <laughs> well, that's going to be a problem. We're going to have to remember that later on. It's going to be like a KS-19 to ruin your day day. And it looks to me like we've also spotted some hosted units here. So if we go to the contact, looks like we spotted a bunch of MiG-21s. Now, I'm not sure why the MiG-21s have decided to land at this particular American Air Force Base, but somebody's going to have to blow them up, and I guess it's going to have to be us. So what we're going to do is, uh, lucky for us, uh, down here in Pennsylvania at my Secret Airport, uh, we have ourselves some F-15Es, which are going to help us out. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the F-15Es only target the part of the airport that contains spotted airports, airplanes, I should say. Obviously, spotted airports, spotted airports. So I notice when I press the 9 key on my numpad here that it exposes all the individual units. And I can see a bunch of these with these little kind of uh, triangle icons here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to pick each one of those in turn. It helps if you click on them properly, though. One, two, three. Nice. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just looking to make sure I didn't miss any. Looks good. So now I'm going to press Control F11 on the keyboard, and I'm going to say, sorry, Barnes. And we'll go ahead and call this a land strike. Press the okie doke. And now all these items in the target list only are the ones that have spotted aircraft at them. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go through some quick little motions here. We're going to check to make sure flight size four, I like that. Uh, split distance, uh, attack method. We're going to do independent aim here and keep it super duper simple. I'll leave everybody in formation. I don't want to make this absurdly complicated. And now what I'm going to do, which is a little different, is down here at the bottom, it says use pre-generated flight plans only, no auto generation by Mission AI. If you pick this box, you are now saying I am responsible for flight planning, but do my thing anyway. And I'll, let's go ahead and play with that. I'm going to click that box. I'm going to grab my F-15Es, toss them into this box here. So now I'm going to go set my time on target. Uh, time on target today, uh, let's go ahead and call that uh, 15. That's way too late. Uh, let's do 13-15-0-0. That looks pretty good to me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach up here. It says create or edit flight plan, update flight plans and click this button. As soon as you do that, you've basically committed the computer to go ahead and calculate your flight here. So now if I actually were to come up here and click on this flight plan, you can see the current breakdown of this flight plan, which is really cool because you can go in and edit these components. But what we're going to do today is we're actually going to go into the flight plan editor to fit with it and be a little bit more powerful here. So I'm going to come down here to flight plan editor and pop that button. And you're going to get a screen that looks like this. Now, there's a couple things going on here that you probably want to be mindful of. I don't mind that. I just want to make sure I didn't accidentally there. There's a couple different things going on here that you want to be very, very, very careful with. Uh, the first things first is you want to make sure you've selected the package you're actually working with here. In this case, I'm doing Sorry Barnes. The other item you have, of course, is the flight itself. So we can actually change this. You know, I can call this Eli 1-1. Or, or for those of you who um, have played way too much DCS, <laughs> we could do something like that. Uh, there's a bunch of buttons over here with deleting and copying. You want to be really cautious with these. I play with these a lot. I get the feeling these features are not quite ready for prime time, especially this button right here. Be careful with that one. So I'm not going to mess with this today, but I am going to show you some other things we got. So scrolling down here, we have a bunch of different uh, waypoints. By the way, before you pick any changes here, you want to make sure you've selected the flight leader. If you don't select the flight leader here, you're going to have issues like crazy. So again, pick the flight leader. So we have a couple different options here. We have the ability to take a look at what time specific waypoints are. We can set specific speeds. Again, people who do DCS, uh, you recognize this already. We can either get there at a speed or we can get there at a time. You can't have both. In this case, you'll notice this one that's got the little red kind of uh, thing here. This is our lock. This says this is the absolute. You can't change this one. When it comes to times, it's difficult to have a lot of these. If you create a lot of these little red guys, by, you know, like if I want to say my landing time must be 845, you know, I can come in here and I can actually go edit time and say, oh, we actually want 1345 in zero seconds. So now that I have done that, I've now created two time constraints. Not only do we have to be at the target at 815, but I want everybody to be landing at 845. The more constraints you create, the more kind of math it has to do. As a matter of fact, if you look here, you'll notice my marshalling point now has a speed of 340. 
So there's other things we can do here. And again, I love the fact we can do this, like just quickly. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can change the takeoff time. So if we want them to rush to the target, of course, we can set the takeoff time later. Let's say I want my takeoff time to be just a little tiny bit later. Uh, let's set edit time. Let's see, we want it to be 12, uh, 45 and zero seconds. That's going to use a lot more fuel, but that's okay. So now what I've done is I've created three separate constraints. And now the times on here are going to be a little bit weirder looking on account of that fact. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at editing things like altitude. Now keep in mind, uh, when you're in a holding pattern, uh, you're burning fuel. So one of the most common tricks here that I've already discovered that works well is you can change the altitude that you hold. So for example, I can come in here and say, oh, I'd rather be holding at an altitude where I get better fuel economy. So I click like that and whoosh, my holding altitude is now 36,000 feet, which is going to save me fuel as they're doing their donut, trying to wait for their kind of approach time, so to speak. So coming down here, I've also got my turning point, my IP, my target. So what I want to do here is I'm going to set my turning point to be at 12,000 feet as opposed to 200 feet. Remember, these are at 15 E's. These things have pretty sophisticated targeting, so I'm pretty confident they can hit something at that altitude. So I'm going to set these all at 12,000 feet. Now remember a little while ago when we did our recce that we spotted a bunch of enemy AAA up there. So obviously we want to be a little bit higher to make them a little bit harder to hit. Next, what I'm going to do is, uh, because why not, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set my speed. I'm also going to come in an afterburner speed. So that means I have very, very, very little time over the target, and I'm a very, very small target to strike. So this is almost a perfect strike pattern here. My altitude's perfectly selected, my speed's perfect, my timing is all completely synchronized, everything is 100% ready to go. Now, the other thing that's really, really cool here is not only can we come in here and fits with stuff like this, but we can actually add waypoints. Now, if you come up here, you can have this little KC-135. This is all going to be some fuel. I can actually force these guys to refuel. So what I'm going to do is that we have this little turning point ingress. That's a waypoint for this is one right here. What I'm going to do is add a waypoint between the hold end and the turning point ingress. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to press the insert waypoint button. And what that's going to do is it's going to add ourselves a new waypoint. Notice this is turning point right here. So instead of turning point, I'm going to set this to refuel. Now watch what happens when I click this. Would you like me to disable it for all this except this one? Yes, please do. So now we don't only have a set takeoff time, and a set target time, and a set landing time. We now have a point during our journey where we're going to force our aircraft to refuel. Now, this is so cool because if you look really carefully, you can see I already have an airplane up ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this waypoint four and watch this. I'm going to park it right here. So that way, when they get to that position, they can actually start the refueling process. Surprise, there's a KC-135 waiting for them. Now, if you want to be ultimate supreme uh, strategic air command, perfect timing kind of a thing, you can even synchronize this across the ocean if you're one of those people. But again, you can do things like this now that we weren't able to do before. So when this is all done, this is wonderful. Please don't click this button. You're going to cry if you do it. Don't do it. Everything else is looking super duper. So we're expecting a takeoff time of uh, 1245 Zulu. Close that, close that, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and unpause, speed up some time. Ta-da, they should be launching momentarily. Now, we've gone past about a minute and a half and you've noticed they have not launched yet. Why have they not launched? Well, the reason they haven't launched is let's go back up to that flight of Enfield 1-1. Remember how we set that constraint where they had to take off at 1245? Well, the other thing we did is we set a bunch of other constraints along here. So the way that the AI calculates these flights, you will sometimes run into a problem where it creates a situation where it can't figure out how to do it. So rather than telling you, hey, something doesn't feel right, it just sort of doesn't work. So uh, that's something you want to watch out for. So if that does occur to you, uh, don't panic. Uh, we can actually come up here and again, oh, you can see they've already started to deploy themselves, which is wonderful. Give them a couple of minutes here. It takes two minutes to get airborne. And again, if they don't immediately launch, because now they're going to be very late to all of their times, you can always just come in here and you can launch them manually. Now watch what happens if they launch them manually, however, though. So I hit space, I launch, send them up in the air. There they go. Um, what do you notice? Ah, you should probably see this right here. See this lovely thing that says Flight 166? Um, now if we go back to F11 here, notice my Enfield 1-1 is gone. Um, all that hard work we just did. Now if I come up here and it says Flight Plan Editor, as you can see, the flight plan has completely deleted itself. So all that hard work that we just spent, again, let me switch this from Enfield 1 to the uh, current call sign that we have. Let me make sure we're on the right mission here. Uh, sorry, Barnes, let's grab this flight 166. You can see it has completely disconnected itself from the flight plan editor. So it's one of those situations that if you start putting all those little stops or those little locks on there, really keep it to one 
Otherwise, you're going to be creating issues. And you can see right now, it kind of blew up. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly recreate everything. Now, as I'm kind of sitting here and I'm putting the last couple touches on this, there's one thing I really wanted to quickly mention. If you do do refueling, if you actually go down here, there's an edit error refueling missions. You can actually sit here and select the mission that you want to create. And you can even have it do things like following receiver's flight plan. I'm going to disable this here because I don't want them to be following uh, along all the way to the strike, which is basically 50 miles away. But uh, just kind of keep this in mind that you can edit that as well. All right, everybody is on the way. So what we've just done is we've uh, launched our flight here, and they're going to do everything that we asked them to do. You know, they're going to enter into the little holding pattern here. Notice they did it at 36,000 feet. Now what they're going to do is they're going to fly to this waypoint four, and now notice they've got plenty of gas on board, but watch what happens the moment they hit the waypoint four. They're going to sit there and go, ooh, well, you know what would be nice? Let's get some gas. And now they've got some gas, and now they're back on their way again. So if you recall, we intentionally told these guys not to drop below 12,000 feet for the strike. So they're swinging in, they're getting nice and low over the terrain here, they're flying right past Talcott Mountain there, uh, scaring the bejesus out of all the people in the really expensive houses. Yep, they're going to hit right over the Farmington Valley. Oh boy, come and pop in up into Massachusetts here, low altitude. They kick up to afterburner at the last possible second, and now they're going to go ripping across the target, giving basically no time at all for anybody to have any sort of reaction. Look at this. Oh, that was sweet. Nice. It looks like one guy ignored my instruction. Now that is what I call a bug, or I call it incompetence. Either one of those is acceptable, depending on how you look at it. So everybody zips back out. Uh, ideally, what they would have done is stayed at the same altitude rather than getting an engine shot out. But again, it's not perfect. Like I said, it's definitely a work in progress. Now, if you pop up to our losses and expenditures, you can see that we did quite a bit of damage. And had everybody stayed at the correct altitude like they were told to, it would have worked even better and nobody would have even gotten shot at during the entire procedure. So hopefully this video is helpful as showing you some of the different ways where you can make a more complex flight plan in order to have a lot more granular control over what goes on. And it was also great to see how you can do that refueling and how you have the ability to actually identify what part of an airport you should actually strike. Other than that, enjoy.